Hey all, Alex from Music Hub here, and today we'll be doing a review of the 2016 biography by James Traub, John Quincy Adams, Militant Spirit. The sixth president of the United States, John Quincy Adams, born the 11th of July, 1767, in Braintree, Massachusetts, died the 23rd of February, 1848, in Washington, D.C. The son of founding father and second president John Adams, John Quincy was nevertheless successful at forging his own career very different from that of his father. An expert at foreign policy, serving as an ambassador to multiple different countries, and arguably the brains behind the Monroe Doctrine while he was uh, James Monroe's Secretary of State, Adams did not have a successful presidency, mostly due to bad blood stemming from the messy 1824 election. And as a result of that, his greatest legacy has come from his time as a congressman in the 1830s and 1840s. Adams advanced anti-slavery causes at a time when nobody else in higher levels of government dared to do so, and his voice was instrumental in giving those movements serious legitimacy in government. The man literally died in the Capitol building after suffering a stroke during a session of Congress. How much more of a public servant could you hope for? This biography was written by James Traub, born the 13th of October, 1954, in New York City. Unbelievably, Traub had no biographical experience before writing this. His background is as a columnist who wrote articles and books about New York City, with a focus on how developments in the city have impacted foreign policy. His 2004 book, The Devil's Playground, is a history of Times Square that I've heard good things about generally, but yeah, overall, this is the first work of Traub's that I've read, and as I said, unbelievably, it's his first ever biography. And the reason why I'm emphasizing that point is because it is a fabulous biography, and I don't think it's just because Traub is writing about maybe one of the most fascinating American politicians to ever live. He has a mixture of accessible language and occasionally even a bit of humor in his writing that lightens up the material without dating it unnecessarily, and he places Adams and his accomplishments in context so incredibly adeptly. To tell Adam's story is difficult without really telling the history of the country that he was living in, and also changing in drastic ways at the same time, and Traub weaves in this history exceptionally well. And as for Adam's the subject, well, more than ever, I think this book has made me realize how much Adam's reminds me of a future American president, none other than Abraham Lincoln. Both Adams and Lincoln were very principled leaders who advocated for unity above all else, but also understood the immorality of slavery as an institution and weren't afraid to express their own moral convictions on the subject. Adams was not an abolitionist for many of the same reasons as Lincoln was not an abolitionist. He thought advocating for the this outcome would completely destroy the unity of the country and by doing so worsen the conditions of many enslaved folks but there are multiple scenes in this book where you can feel not just adams's contempt for the institution of slavery but his genuine anger at it i particularly love the ways that he expressed his feelings on this subject in the halls of congress he had a way of getting under Southern congressmen's skins that nobody else could really approach. And he survived multiple attempts to censure him by simply outwitting these people. It's pretty amazing and hilarious to read about. Credit also goes to this book for painting Adams as a principled man, but not a flawless one. He was not exactly a family man and... His wife and children certainly felt his emotional absence at times. Louisa Adams, his wife, is commonly painted as a weak, fragile figure in um, Adams-related narratives, and Traub avoids this by addressing both her stronger character traits, like her cutting sarcasm, and the depression and illness that debilitated her for many years of her life, kind of balancing the two in equal, fair measure. A somewhat underappreciated First Lady, in my humble opinion. 
But overall, there's nothing I disliked about this book, and I really mean nothing. I know there's been a recent revival of interest in John Quincy Adams, and I've seen other biographies from the last 10 years or so that are rated highly. Fred Kaplan's biography is the first one that comes to mind, for instance. But I find it tough to believe that any of them will top this one, which is about as good as any other presidential biography I've read so far in this journey, up there with Chernow's volume on Washington, McCullough on Adams, that sort of thing. And I think that uh, John Quincy Adams, out of all these so-called mediocre presidents, warrants a biography more than just about any of the rest. A man of principle and of strong moral character, yeah, he's worth reading about. Pick this up. Give it a look. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. As always, more reviews are to come. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time right here on Music Hub.